everybody, I wanted to make an, uh, let's see, what am I making? A mid-year homeschool update for our group subjects. Um, I shared a video back in August, maybe? I can't remember. Um, of I had three videos, what our plans were for our group subjects, plans for my sixth grader, and plans for my third grader. And I've honestly been meaning to make this update for a month or two, and I, I'm gonna do it today. I'll get this one done today, and then hopefully um, later in the week, I'll have my sixth graders and my third graders um, curriculum update. So the first thing that we planned to do for this school year was Torchlight level three. I wanted to really lean into Torchlight this year and try to incorporate as much of it as we could. And we did a really good job for about the first 10 to 12 weeks. And um, we were doing everything. We weren't doing the writing and language arts, um, but we were pretty much doing everything else plus other stuff that I had wanted to do. Um, and oh, the other thing we weren't doing, we, we never ended up doing the How to Teach Your Child Shakespeare, but we did um, read the Shakespeare when it was assigned. Um, we did all of the like art appreciation, art history. Um, we read some of the read alouds and then some of them my kids read independently. Anyway, it was great, but I was completely burnt out by the end of the 10 weeks or so that we did. Um, and honestly, it was just too much with everything else that I was adding into our school year. I felt really just overwhelmed and like I could not fit everything in. So it was great. We did it for the first um, part of the year, but we are not going to continue following the schedule for the remainder of the year. So I'll show you, we're gonna keep a few pieces of it, but I really, I really, really do love Torchlight. It just was too much for me. Um, I, was, I just got very overwhelmed by trying to fit everything in that was in here, plus all the other stuff that I had pulled that I wanted to do as well. I thought it was a lot. Um, so let's see, first of all, we did their history, which was Curiosity Chronicles, and we are going to continue with Curiosity Chronicles. Um, we are still on volume one. Um, we did really good with all of our schooling up until beginning of November, and then we kind of were hit or miss with what we did through the holidays, and now we're kind of back to it. But anyway, we're finishing up volume one. Um, we had like a binder set up and that, that worked okay. We did the maps. Um, very rarely did they do like the crossword and the um, coloring page. Uh, we also did the Lit House Learning uh, writing to go with it. I will talk more about the writing revolution and writing in general later, but we did um, utilize the Lit House Learning pages um, to go with it. And then they also had their timeline um, notebook that they did um, along with it. Um, so we did a lot. I will say that I feel like this particular um, this particular unit of Curiosity Chronicles is it's a lot. I feel like it's a lot to fit in. You're doing um, two chapters. A week plus a culture corner um, and it's a lot so we pretty much stopped adding in any extra stuff um, we, we stopped ordering in the extra books from the library we just we couldn't fit it all in so I really only order in any extra books now if I feel like they just need a little bit more to help them understand um, and we really don't do many of the hands-on activities. The only ones we really do are um, the Minecraft building sometimes. Um, or if there's like an activity that they included pages for, like there was kind of like a Monopoly type game, that kind of thing. Um, but it's fine, it's going well. We listen um, to the chapter on... We listen to the chapter on 
our Yoda player. Oh, here it is. We listen to the chapter on here. I just put it on a Yodo card. Um, so we listen to it on here. And the, while we're listening to it, the kids are reading along with the chapter. They each have the book. And then when we're done with that together, they work through the um, vocabulary and the comprehension questions. And yeah, that's what we're gonna continue with. That's kind of what's been working for us. So we will continue with Curiosity Chronicles for uh, this year. So that's been going well. Um, the science. So if you watched my Curriculum Picks video, you knew that we were going to do the science recommended in Torchlight, which is um, Scientific Connections Through Inquiry Level 3. I really love this program. I love the idea of this program. I made a few videos on kind of how we were making it work for us. Um, but in addition to that, I also had, we were going to be doing some group reads that um, tied in science as well. These are a couple of them. So we had a lot of science planned. I also had some things planned individually for my kids. Um, and so I liked this program, but what I found was happening was because it was so reliant on me and I didn't feel as confident as I think I should have been in presenting this information. I, I, I'm not sure what it is exactly about it, but I just found myself constantly putting it off. Um, and we were getting more and more behind because I just wasn't comfortable presenting it, I guess. And so we are making a change. We have already made a change for science. We have set this aside. We like the things that we did. I'm glad that we did it. Um, they definitely got a lot out of it. Um, but we are switching gears for, um, until, you know, for now until the end of the year. Um, but they did really, they had a science notebook that they did along, um, along with that, like in addition to, and then we got to two of our, these were our literature and science. We got to two of the ones that I had planned. Um, the evolution of Calpurnia Tate, that was a lot of fun, and George's secret key to the universe um, went really well, and we did notebooking kind of along, along with um, all of that. So that went really well. Um, I did have way more books planned for this year than we're going to get to, if I'm being realistic. So I think there's three more that I really want to try to get done before the end of the year. We'll see. Um, they all have kind of a science uh, kind of tie into them. Um, but anyway, moving forward, in addition to that, our just regular science that we're going to be doing is Science Mom um, Earth Science. And I kind of came across this. I'd heard people talk about it before but I didn't really know what it was about. And as I was looking for some science options for next school year, I started looking at this. And the ones that I would wanna do for next year, I would have to pay for. And so before I paid for something, I wanted to try, they have this one, Earth Science, um, which I believe is grades four to five uh, for free. So we are doing the Earth Science one for free right now with, even though it's grades four to five, I'm doing it with my third and sixth grader and it's working great. Um, they are video led and then there's note pages that you print out that you can do along with it. There are occasionally like kind of art projects that they can do with it too. There's the one we just did. Let me see. Um, it was flattened to kind of put in the notebook, but uh oh. That came off. But anyway, there was a uh, different layers of the atmosphere that they did with that one. Um, anyway, my kids both really, really like it. And I like that the pressure is kind of off of me. I'm not the one responsible for presenting. So it's going really well. Um, and I think we will continue with it next year as well. But this is what we're doing for science for the rest of this year and then like I said we will finish um, we will do some other novels that I want to do we're doing them kind of for literature and they have a science tie-in um, as well so we will do a few more of those um, let's see 
art. So art and music, um, we did The Paint Lab, which was a book that they recommended a lot. I actually really liked this book. We also have another art curriculum, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then there were different like art appreciation and art history books. This one, Old Masters Rock, How to Look at Art with Children. We will actually continue this because my kids um, really liked it. So this is one that even though we're not gonna follow Torchlight in the second half of the school year, we will continue with that. And I really liked this. The kids did some really fun projects. Um, So I think we will definitely um, pull from that again throughout the school year. And I like that there, there were projects in here that I probably normally wouldn't have done. Um, so I thought that that was good. And like I said, we'll continue to do that. Most of the other books in the art section, I could take them or leave them. So I'll probably leave them. Um, Let's see. Okay, and then the innovation and inquiry went over really well. Um, the things that we did, one of the projects that they did that they really liked was where they got to create their own games. So my daughter made um, this game called Trading Kitties, Cat versus Dog Battle, and she made, um, those are her directions, she made all of these trading cards. That's what the back looks like. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. They had a lot of fun really kind of coming up with their game and they had to write out rules for their game. And it was a lot of fun. That was the one my daughter, my um, sixth grader made. And then my third grader made this one called Deet Land and I don't know if it's really going to show in the frame or not, but he's got all kinds of little playing pieces that he created to go with it. There's a, this is a very complicated game to play, I will just tell you. But he um, made a game board. And he wrote out his rules. So they had a lot of fun with this. They put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, and so that was really, really great. Um, they definitely used the Innovator notebooks that were part of um, Torchlight. However, we're probably not going to continue them in any kind of formal manner for um, the remainder of the year. They also wrote a play um, as part of this, so we'll see. We may pick this up at some point, I don't know, but we're just kinda kinda set this as a scheduled curriculum aside. It was good, it's just too much for me with everything else that we have. So that is Torchlight. We are saying goodbye to Torchlight um, for the rest of the year. And let's see what we have next. Um, okay, so the other thing we were doing for art is Atelier Homeschool Art. I made a video about their online version. We, to save money, are doing an older version that I got on DVDs off of eBay. Again, I like this, but we were also doing it along with this, and so it was a lot. Um, but we are going to continue it. Again, they did some really nice projects. They had to set up the still life, which was really fun to watch them pull. This was kind of in the fall near Halloween. Watch them kind of pull pieces to set up their own still life. Um, I forget what this one was, but they both ended up drawing cats. So maybe that's what they were supposed to draw. I don't remember. This one again was early during the year. This one I think was about um, like perspective, maybe distance. I did one with different lines. So again, a lot of really fun things. One area that I really wanted to put focus on this year was a lot of our kind of extracurricular types of things. And we did 
definitely did better with that in the first semester than we have been doing since then. Um, another area that we were working on was coding and we have these Coder Academy books from Usborne. Um, we are up to page 29 it looks like. 27 is the last page we did. Um, this is okay. The problem though is that the online um, using Scratch has changed. Scratch has changed since this book was published and so not everything is where it says it's going to be in the book and so that has been a little bit frustrating um, causing us to kind of set this aside here and there. Um, the other <clears throat> extracurricular we had was for, or elective, I'm sorry, not extracurricular, elective, was for music, uh, the keyboard, piano. And originally I had shared some things that I had on hand that we were going to use. We started with those and then I just quickly decided that it wasn't the route I wanted to go. I ended up getting this theory time, um, grade one, I'm using it for both my kids and that's been going well so far. I like the way the lessons are laid out. Um, let me flip and show you some in the back that we haven't done yet. Also, we just started taking a look at Hoffman Academy a little bit closer. We did a couple lessons of like the uh, free ones and my kids really like those. So we'll see um, in this new year as we move forward, if we continue with this, if we switch to Hoffman or if we do some combination of the two, that's probably what we'll do. Um, and then the other area was sewing. Again, we didn't get as far as I wanted to, but we've been mostly using this book, Sewing for Kids. We're still just doing hand sewing. They practice threading their needle, um, doing a whip stitch and a running stitch. And now we're on to um, tracing a pattern. And so I think the next project is to create this needle house to store their needles in. So not as far in that as I would like to be, but it is going, it is going well. Uh, somewhere I had notes and now I don't know where I put them. Things I wanted to mention. Hmm. Um, these are the three kind of books we did as group reads for literature. Uh, we did comprehension and just other things with them. With these two, like I said, we tied in science. This was, actually these two were both Torchlight read-alouds. Um, again, we did them as group reads where we each had a copy of the book and we either read together out loud or um, like taking turns or sometimes I would assign a chapter and we would each read it on our own and then come back together. Um, so those are the three that we got through this year. And let's see, oh, here's my notes. Um, math, okay. So we started the year planning to use um, the pilot program for fifth grade math with confidence and the, we got through the first unit and my kids were both really struggling for some reason, even though it was just a review, they were really struggling um, with that. Now, over the summer, we had been testing out jump math. And so when they were starting to get really frustrated with the very first unit of math with confidence, I said, hey, let's just switch back to jump math. This is also fifth grade. And so this is really what we've been focusing on. I need to decide if we're gonna jump back into the pilot or not, it's, kind of, it's a little bit late at this point. Um, but this is going you know, pretty well, and it's maybe a little bit more challenging to implement only because there's not, um, there's a teacher's manual, but it's, it's online, and the sections that are in here don't necessarily it's not like uh, something for them to look at while you talk. This is like for after you teach the lesson. Um, so anyway, it's it's all right. I mostly like it. It's working better for them, I guess, right now than Math with Confidence. So um, let me just show you. So this is kind of what the teacher's, oops, the teacher's manual looks like. You can get it for free online. This is a Canadian program, but this is the US edition. So it gives you your goals, prior knowledge, and then it just gives you the lesson. So I'd usually just do it on a marker board. I don't typically do everything that they have in here. There's usually some extra activities and things. 
um, but it pretty much walks you through the lesson. So that's what we're doing right now for math. And like I said, it's going fine. We're not as far as we should be, um, but again, it's fine. Um, oh, we're, they're also doing typing with Typesy, and that's going great. They have progressed really pretty far. Um, they do it once a week, and that's going really well. They also write in their journal once a week. That's going really well. Um, I have these kind of makerspace notebooks for them this year, and they've been just doing these kind of on their own. There's different little um, prompts for them to try. I don't really uh, monitor this. They just do it when they want to do it. So there's a page in here like this for them to kind of map out what they want to do. I don't know if they did any in December. Let's see. No, they didn't. So anyway, again, that's going fine. Um, okay, and then the last thing that I think I'm going to talk about is writing. So we have been implementing the writing revolution this year. It's been going all right. It's been a process for me to kind of wrap my brain around it all. Um, we purchased a bunch of different units from Lit House Learning to kind of help guide us. And that is going fine. Um, we're kind of changing things up a little bit for this year. We're, the rest of this year, we're still using the Writing Revolution, um, but we're going to kind of do it in a more focused way. So, like, um, we're not the way we were doing it was every day we did history. If there was a Writing Revolution or a Lit House Learning um, writing to go with it, we did it with history. And this uh, month, we're just going to pull out the ones that relate to the history we're on that go with whatever skill we're working on in the writing revolution. So um, I found that the older version of writing revolution is a little bit easier to understand. Um, you can get it for free online. I will, I linked it in another video, but I'll try to remember to link it down below. Um, but they have these kind of goal sheets and these go better with the way my brain works. So there's sentence goals, and then I believe there's paragraph. There's other goal sheets. These are just the ones that I printed out for right now because they're the ones that we're on. Um, I don't think I have the other ones here. Um, so I'm just finding different ways in our curriculum to focus on different skills that are in the like the sentence writing section for right now. So sometimes that's doing something from Lit House Learning. And sometimes that's doing, what are some of the ones we've done? Let's see. Um, so at Halloween, we read a book and then we did a um, because but so activity that went along with the book. Um, this was another one we did kind of around Halloween. Um, let's see. So oh, another thing that we've done is I started once a week, I take one of their journal entries that they write. And these are these are just um, writing prompts. They're not like a diary kind of their hopes and dreams and fears and whatever. It's just different writing prompts I give them. So I pull one of those out that they've written and I rewrite it exactly how they wrote it. And then we kind of go through it together as a group and we correct um, capitalization and grammar and all of that. And then we, find a way to work some of the sentence uh, goals that we've been talking about into what they wrote. Is there a way they can make one of their sentences stronger using a because but so, or you know something like that. So it's been going fine. It's probably been going a little bit slow just as I've been kind of trying to wrap my brain around all of it, but it's going well and I think it'll get stronger um, this second half of the year, so. All right, I think that is everything that I had on my list. So I'm sorry if this kind of, if I droned on forever, but hopefully this was helpful to you um, to see kind of how our group subjects went and what changes we're making for the rest of the year. If you have questions, let me know down below and then look for um, those separate videos on my sixth graders independent, um, individual work and my third graders individual work.